First of all, everybody understands that the certificates are so much in use that you must have heard of the certificate. And, um, and now in this class today we will teach you how to get your own certificate. But if you start a business, you get a certificate, like Amazon has a certificate. And anytime you do HTTPS, they want to see the certificate. I mean, at least you want to see their certificate, if not yours. You want to see their certificate, and if the certificate doesn't match, the browser gives you another, you know, please get me out of here, you know, things like that, right? And that is because the certificate doesn't match. And um, so what is that certificate is what we talked about. It is an X509 thing, which has all these values. And the interesting thing is that you can go to your browser and look at any of these. And I would suggest that you do that. And, and that's why we have the homework actually to do that. Is that you can go into your browser, either Firefox or I have both of them, and I have not tried on the others, but Firefox and Internet Explorer. Both of them store a lot of certificates. In particular, they have to store the root certificate. Why root certificate? Because anybody can say this is a root, I am a root certificate, and then, you know, there will be a problem. So only certain companies are recognized by Microsoft, you know, or Apple or whoever is your provider, and those certificates are stored in your browser cache, and those are the only ones which are trusted. Those root certificates can sign other people's certificates. So suppose Amazon goes to VeriSign and gets a certificate, then the very science public key has to be in our browser to verify Amazon certificate. So that's why very sign is one of the root certificate that is in our browser. So everybody understand why root certificates have to be built by Microsoft, built in the browser by Microsoft. And anytime you try to change that, it will complain that somebody is trying to put a new root certificate or something like that. So the root certificate is signed by the root itself, by the same person, same company, saying that here is my public key and I guarantee it. Well, anybody can say that, so we don't believe everybody, we just believe maybe 100 companies in the world. Okay? So those are the root certificates. And if you go into the, any of the certificates, you will find all this information which we went through the list and some belong to version 1, some belong to version 2, some belong to version 3. Right now we are in version 3. The main thing with version 3 was, or actually what wrong with version 1 was, version 1 allowed X500 names. X500 names are something that we don't generally like or use. If I, if I go to Amazon and ask them what is the name, they will say Amazon.com. But that is not X500. Okay, uh, and if you ask me, I would say, you know, join at ACM, join at CSE, you know, that is my username for the mail, but that is not X500. So X500 names were not very popularly used, so that was a problem because we could not correlate the popular name with the X500 name. So, and this, we went through this slide also is that, you know, when you have a certificate, then you know some, you could be that you know somebody certifies somebody and then they certified and if you want to go to somebody in Russia obviously they are not using very signed certificates so then you have to you know have some higher authority who certifies both the root authorities but anyway there are other extensions for example serial number of the certificate authority and the subject keys which means that um, subject is the person who's whose certificate it is. So for example, if I have my driver's license, I am the subject. And the certification authority is the Missouri DMV, right? So that is the serial number of them, then, and then there is a key usage, what that key can be used for. So it turns out that some keys are used more often than others. And so they don't want to, you to have a key that was issued for something very, very rare use, and you start using it for very common use, like email. You send out thousands of emails, it will be very easily compromised. Right? So the key has a restriction on what it is designed for. So it might say it is for email, this is for you know financial transaction, whatever it is, right? Private key usage period, and then obviously they want to get money every month, every year. So they give you a time limit for which the key is valid or the certificate is valid. There are policies, and now then there is an alt name. 
So the alt name is the new name now. So you, if the X509 version 3 can have alt name, an alt name could be your DNS name. So for example, alt name could be gen at csc.wistel.edu. And the directory attributes, and so there are other attributes, which, there are plenty of them anyway. So, so what if the certificate is revoked? Just like this. You're driving, you're caught driving, you know, drunk, they revoke your license. Right? Similarly, a certificate, if you are, you are using it and somebody gets hold of that certificate and somehow, you know, compromises it, then it has to be revoked. It may not be your fault. You do lose your driver's license and somebody makes a new picture on that one and so on and so forth. So, certificate has to be revoked. So, what do we do? So, for that, we have to keep a list. Now, some of you might remember the old days of credit card when, when you use the credit card, they used to have a book in which they used to look up the name. Anybody remember that, those days? Or you guys are all too young. But <laughs> that is how the credit card started. Is they used to have a thick book like this. Every month the book used to come, and they would look up your number 5907, whole 16 digits in that list. That was the CRL. CRL means Certificate Revocation List. That credit card is no well, not good. Because they did not have the online method of checking it right then. They would put it on a piece of paper, your credit card, the amount, ask you to sign it, and those paper slips will be processed next week or next month or you know next day or in the night. Right? Now we have online, so you haven't seen those lists. Basically, right now what we do is you, as soon as you scan the card, you know, it goes to the company and they check it out. That this is valid or not. So somebody has to keep the list though. Right, so there's a big list somewhere of all the revoked licenses. And um, so what happens is, you, so, so basically, so that is called CRL. So the certificate, each certificate has a CRL address. Okay, if you want to check out whether this is still valid today, you go to that CRL. All right? And IEPF has designed, uh, actually, so basically there are two ways. One is that you go to the certificate authority, and certificate authority may not be up, so that's not very good. So the CRLs would really exist at many places. So now they have something called server, CRL server, you can call them, but they are called online revocation server, O-L-R-S. Now we could have multiple copies of them. So you could have one in St. Louis, one in California, and they would just you know, synchronize themselves so that everybody has full information. Or if they, they don't synchronize, they could ask somebody else that, okay, do you have this in your list? So there's a protocol called OCSP, Online Certificates Status Protocol. That protocol lets them talk to each other and figure out whether the certificate is still valid. So, so now you could have a whole chain of OCSPs if somebody brings a credit card from Germany into United States, it's still good because we can just go to our um, O O O L O L R S server, and that server could go to Germany's server and 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 find it out. All right. So the three key things here. First of all, you understand what is CRL. Everybody understands what is CRL. It's basically a list of all these, basically all the serial numbers of the uh, certificates that are invalid. Second thing you should know is that they are O L R S. What do O L R S do? They just keep the list at many places. So you don't have to go to CA. CA is one company, one person, right? And you can go to any of the OLRS. Now, how do the OLRS talk to each other? And that is OCSP. So now, here's an example of a CRL. Actually, an example of a certificate which is not valid. Now, this certificate, I took it from my Internet Explorer. This certificate is assigned to Microsoft Corporation. But it is not valid, right? It was compromised by somebody somehow. So whenever Microsoft gives you a browser, they make it built in. Actually, there are two certificates to Microsoft which are built into your list. There are many other certificates which are built in. The reason they are built in is because they are so commonly needed. I mean, they won't build in if I lose a certificate and it is, then I have to go to OLRS. But if Microsoft loses it, you know, that's a big deal. So that is built into your, in your computer. All right. So there's a whole list of such certificates in your browser, and you can go and look at them. 
Now, obviously, this list is not complete. This certain, these revoked licenses are only whatever Microsoft thought they're very common things so that you don't create traffic on the network. And the root certificates are built in, and these are, these are some common ones are built in. So that brings us to the end of the certification business. So five or six key points. First is we have to distinguish between master keys and session keys. Why do we need session keys? That's right, master key cannot be changed easily. So you want to keep it in a safe, and you use session keys every few minutes, a new session key. Then how do you distribute secret key? By a KDC or by public keys? KDC is one way and public key is another. And the reason public keys, I mean public keys can be used just for the keys but not for the message, right? Public keys themselves are distributed. How do you distribute public keys? You need a certificate. And that's why you need PKI. What is PKI? Public key infrastructure. So this whole system of certificate authorities, so the vocation list, OLSR, this whole thing is called PKI. You know what is the root certificate? Right? All right, PKIX is a profile of 509. So now 509 is a standard which allows many, many possibilities. PKIX narrows it down. So for example, 509 will say you can use any signature algorithm. Now if everybody used any signature algorithm, they will never match. So they have to use a particular one. That is PKIX. And then it uses 500 names, and then the DNS names are now used in the alternate name field. And you should check out your certificate or their, anybody's certificate and see what is in the alternate field. Okay? Certificate revolution list CRLs are issued, and OCSP, and so on and so forth, we talked about. First homework is study the root certificate in your Internet Explorer. Find the certificate for this company. What is the X500 name of the company? Oh, sorry, 500 name of the CA. Okay, the reason you will find the 500 name of the company and the CA are the same. In this case, this is a root certificate, and therefore CA is that company. The certification authority for that company is the same company. Right? So you'll find the 500 name, and then what version? Then you have to find out what is the what is this use restricted to, and then you have to find out what signature algorithm is used, and what is the public key. The public key is very big, 2,000 bits long. Obviously, I don't want to write 2,000 bits, so just tell me the last four bytes of the public key. 